Hello chess friends and welcome to Yuzar of Chess Channel and welcome to a very special game that I prepared for you today. It's a brilliant game played by two top tacticians between uh, Alexei Shirov and Temur Rajabov back from 2007. And I uh, spent my day really in a good way today because I played some chess and I analyzed some chess and then I made some opening preparations in particular sidelines and similar stuff. I just uh, had really a good chessy day sort of. And then I really wanted to follow more games played by players that are playing now in the forthcoming candidates in 2022 so we'll use as i said this games as sort of a warm-up for the candidates in 2022 and i found really this beauty beauty in the king's indian that was played by rajabo with the black piece it's amazing amazing tactical stuff but before we start to analyze the game i wanted to introduce to you who is actually playing uh, in the candidates in 2022 because this candidate could be really one of the best candidates ever uh, so many great players are here for for instance we have Jan Nepomnes which is always a great thing although Nepo lost his uh, world championship match against Magnus Carlsen but it doesn't matter still I think Nepo can come back and maybe reach a new finals perfect stuff Temur Ajabov is here which is really great uh, he deserves his place I think because uh, he got kicked out by Fide in the last uh, candidate because of this virus situation you know the story uh, he didn't want to play then uh, suddenly uh, they kicked him will uh, kick them out all of this event so as I said, in my in my opinion honest opinion really it's a great thing for us to have Temur Ajabov in the tournament what I really like is the fact that Duda is here and Duda played recently really really amazing great tactical chess he plays really now in a uh, different style he plays really in sort of a sharp way that's why i really love the fact that Duda is here he could be sort of a surprise as i said we'll see but i really love the fact that he is here sergey karakin is out and uh, probably his place will be taken by the highest rated player now uh, after magnus carlson and after uh yeah Firuja, but this is now ding liren uh, he is now the highest rated player after magnus carlson and he is probably making it to the candidates for sure because he still has to play more games uh, there are certain rules that the being learned has to make but uh, in my opinion he's uh, in the candidates for sure which is also I think a great thing for us uh, because being learned was always a prestigious player in top grandmaster level so as I said I think he deserves also his place in the candidates we'll not talk about the Sergei Karakin ideas uh, I'm not uh, going to talk about politics here on my channel so you're not going to uh, see me talking about politics about uh, the situation with Russia and Ukraine as I said uh, this is uh, simply not my style so uh, here what I really like is uh, the fact that also Alireza is here Alireza is of course the best player the best young uh, player of these days and uh, you, we haven't seen now Alireza playing in a while which is I think a good thing for us uh, maybe not for us but for him it's a good thing because he didn't reveal maybe many of his secret uh, openings that he's preparing at home so he's probably preparing it's a good thing as I said he has good chances maybe even to win the candidates in 2022 so Caruana is here also I think a great thing because um, Caruana is always a player that could actually win this kind of an event because you don't know how Fabi can play the game uh, sometimes if you get into his opening purpose then you get smashed immediately so Caruana of course always a uh, sort of a guy that you basically don't know how he's going to play this uh, very important term Hikaru of course this is great for chess because first of all Hikaru has a good fan base and uh, many of uh, his viewers will follow his games when he's playing but Hikaru Nakamura played also really in a different style now recently more aggressive uh, his games are more and more sharper and more tactical which I really like Hikaru uh, is getting better and better I'm not sure how how he's improving uh, with every day because he's training much he's explaining things uh, he's playing just um, uh, against even lower rated players so I'm not sure where he has time to prepare himself prepare himself but I really love the fact that Hikaru is here imagine Hikaru winning maybe the candidates and then he faces Magnus Carlsen this will be I think a monstrous monstrous world chess championship so as I said Richard Rapport here of course also a great thing because he won also the one of the speed grand prix events so as i said in my opinion it will be one of the best candidates ever be prepared this will be really really wild stuff so let's check out now this promised game and Temur Ajabo with the black pieces and Alexa Shiro with the white piece that's we have the Kings Indian uh, one of the sharpest openings ever so let's check out now the game so we have d4 by Shiro knight to f6 c4 g6 and knight to c3 bishop to g7 after e4 d6 
<laughs> we have reached now the normal king's indian position so we have here the move knight to f3 uh bishop to e2 pardon me followed with knight to uh, knight to f, uh, f3 f3 king side casting knight to f3 so here the classical stuff the normal idea so we have now the move e5 uh f3 king, king side casting we have knight to c6 and now d5 so this is now the orthodox variation the classical variation after knight to e7 uh, we can always say about these types of positions that black is going to coordinate his attack uh, towards the king side because this pawn chain is showing us where we should attack and on the other hand this small pawn chain also is showing the direction of white attack so many times uh white is preparing b4 c5 a4 so white is launching an early flank attack on the queen side so uh here in the continuation we have here the move b4 and this is now the so-called bayonet attack and uh, in my opinion it's one of the best methods for white to make progress because we have to notice i think this b4 is an immediate attack uh on the queen side and that's basically our goal that that's what i always liked about the bayonet attack uh, from white's perspective what you should not do uh, this was played many many times in in history in chess history this move a5 to make some kind of a um to stop actually here white's progress but actually oh, here white can always make progress with the move bishop to a3 after a takes b4 bishop to b4 okay you could try maybe some kind of an idea with the move b6 preventing maybe b4 but now with a4 a5 we can all already notice that uh white is much much faster when it comes to attack the queen side than uh, black attacking the king side because black didn't make any progress here on this side of the board that's what i never really liked about this uh, line for black is because white is simply uh, getting his attack immediately black is waiting a little bit so in this uh, in these types of structures where you have to be fast on your side when you're attacking i think um, here black is simply much 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 slower so that's why uh, here uh, temora java plays one of the best systems and this is now the let's move knight to h5 immediately threat uh, here is to play knight to f4 after bishop to f4 you see it takes f4 and then this long diagonal for the dark school bishop could get opened knight and c3 would be hanging the rook also so uh, then maybe after this kind of moves then maybe a5 is the more realistic opportunity to attack also here a uh, little bit the a file supported with the bishop so it's i think then a different position and then it's much much better so after move knight to h5 here we have uh, rook to e1 play by alexia shield the idea is clear because if you play now knight to f4 uh white doesn't need to react against this bishop white still can retreat bishop to f1 and then still can play something like g3 uh kicking with the knight so as i said this uh, rook to e1 is actually a move in order to create some breathing spaces for the bishop so after move um, rook to e1 here immediately f5 by uh, uh temur Ajabov. and this is actually how you should uh, play this uh, bayonet attack from black's perspective f5 perfectly fine but there is always one problem about these types of structures there is always this weakness on e6 and many times white will attack the e6 weakness immediately playing knight to g5 knight to e6 but uh, if you play that then of course after f6 e6 this e6 pawn is a weakness but it, sometimes it can be also your main strength i will explain of course in a couple of more moves why sometimes it can be a strength why it sometimes can be weakness so it's basically uh, a position that you reach many many times in the bayonet attack here from f5 knight to g5 was played by um of course by Alexei Shirov and also he is creating now an immediate attack against the knight on h5 so we have now knight to f6 and now uh, f3 now uh, here Alexei Shirov is trying to get some kind of a really healthy pawn structure firm pawn structure in front of the king and what he's trying to do is of course play an afterwards bishop to e3 and then to make further progress with the move c5 that's how white is trying now to get into the game so here we have a beautiful move by Alec uh, pardon me by Temur Ajabov that is many many times uh, played in in king's indian structures this idea is clear because we want to create some breathing spaces for the knight so we also want to play something like i don't know knight to g8 then bishop to uh, uh bishop to f6 then maybe to remove move the bishop somewhere to include the bishop on this diagonal into the game because what we can always notice in in king's indian structures is sometimes that when when you block uh the position with the move e5 that your dark core bishop is sometimes a bad piece it can be sometimes even your best piece but if white doesn't react if white doesn't open the center if something uh, still gets blocked out maybe we can play something like f4 in order to make further progress because 
as we said we're trying to get our attack on the king side with the move f4 h6 g5 we're trying to launch a frank attack on that side but if you play too early f4 then your bishop on g7 could be paralyzed it would be simply blocked out by your own pawn so that's why with ideas king to h8 knight to g7 knight to g8 bishop to f6 then maybe we could search for new opportunities for the bishop and then maybe f4 is still a possibility but when you have maybe the bishop here on h4 then it could be a good good bishop again in the game so as i said this is very very important if you don't know what to do sometimes with your dark square bishop so after move king to h8 we have here knight to e6 and this was maybe a slightly inaccurate move uh, many times this move is played in top grand master level but um, this knight to e6 is a little bit too rushed basically uh, many times white is uh, waiting uh, black to play the move h6 when the move h6 happens then the pawn structure is a little bit more weakened and then you play knight to e6 so so far you didn't get challenged so you when you don't get challenged um, don't play the, with the knight immediately maybe it was simply better here to play bishop to e3 immediately with our normal goal um, to play then afterwards to move uh, c5 which was basically our main idea in the beginning so as i said maybe this move knight to e6 a little bit too rush of course here the job of takes bishop to e6 and after d takes e6 we have now knight to h5 again trying this knight to f4 outpost so we have g3 here played by uh, alexia shirov he's not allowing here a team or a job of, of course to take the square and now we have this maneuver so you see uh, how it was important now you see we have opportunities to play knight to uh, knight to g7 in some occasions we could also try some ideas of knight to g8 maybe even knight to h6 if the position allows it so we have now many many maneuvers with the knight but there is always one problem for instance if you get challenged with the move knight to d5 of course what you don't want to do is uh, to take knight takes d5 would be suicide because now finally after c takes d5 you see this e6 gets connected and that's exactly what a bionate attack uh, player would love to get this kind of a position where we have this annoying pawn where we could have maybe an open c file attack the c7 weakness so as i said this is something that you should not do if you if your opponent jumps here on the d5 that's something uh that you have to tolerate that uh, maybe uh the knight will not be there forever because still you can kick it away then afterwards with the move uh, c6 so after move knight to d5 uh here the best way actually is to play f4 continuing simply the progress if knight takes f6 then you have rook to f6 and if you for instance take f takes uh oh, pardon me g takes f4 then of course knight to f4 and still we have a beautiful compact position because now this is a knight that is much much better than this bishop and even if we trade it off uh bishop to f4 rook to f4 we can notice now that we have reached now a position where um black's knight is much much better especially because of the fact that we can play something like knight to c6 and then we could also uh, occupy here the weak d4 square and when we jump with our knight here on d4 uh, then this knight cannot be kicked away by any minor piece anymore so when the knight comes on d4 this will be simply the best piece on the board so the white has to be also careful as i said if ever move knight to d5 you just tolerate a little bit this knight and then afterwards still you have opportunities of course to kick it away so this is not a knight that will stay there forever so it's not an outpost at night it's maybe a temporary outpost but as i said with move c6 still we can kick it away which is very important in the position if for instance our pawn would be somewhere on c5 then this knight would be very annoying to handle because you couldn't then kick it away anymore with with your with your pawns and then uh, then this knight will stay there forever uh, in order to get rid of it you have to simply trade it off and we have seen after c takes d5 that you face many many positional problems so these are the tiny little things that you have to uh, have to consider when you're playing the king's indian when you're playing also some different openings watch out for your squares because if your opponent cements the position of round one square you could be positionally dead so here i have to move bishop to f6 uh, that um uh the job of play here we have uh c5 uh, by uh by shirov he's trying to break here the position in the center and now f4 very important move to make further progress and now we have king to g2 if you try g4 then of course knight to g7 and then after something like queen to b3 maybe to protect the pawn uh the cool part is that we have now this move knight to c6 it's very important because now with knight to d4 we can kick away the queen then this uh, pawn is uh, hanging here and uh, again this maneuver with bishop to f6 was very important because as we said when you block out too much the position on dark swords then you should find good routes for the bishop now with bishop to h4 at least 
uh, the bishop can come into the game and it may be one particular moment maybe not immediately but we could even try some ideas of bishop to g3 then h takes g3 h takes g uh, pardon me f takes g3 then the queen comes on h4 with the pawn on g3 maybe we could deliver even checkmate so this is also i think sort of a tactical idea that you should consider maybe it's working maybe it's not i'm not sure but in particular position maybe it's something worth to analyze in your head so as i said many many uh, good ideas i think you can produce always in the king's indian so after move um uh we have seen after move f4 so here g4 would be uh, not a good move so that's why king to g2 was played by alexa shirov he's trying uh, to protect protect himself uh, of course around the square g3 so we have down knight to c6 again rajabov is uh, getting use of the d4 square we have the uh, c takes uh, d6 c takes d6 and now comes this idea knight to d5 we have knight to d4 okay here rajabov is saying you have your uh, d5 square but i have also my d4 square we have now bishop to b2 attacking the knight and now finally this pawn is taken so you see how um, in the bayonet attack this knight to e6 hop is a little bit rushed so it wasn't prepared i think by um by alexa shiro so still uh, this is playable for white and for black especially because white is still the bishop pair and can make further progress on the queen side but as i said there are even lines in some occasions in which black cannot really take the pawn on e6 so uh, it's as i said so far a good game by the job of so after move uh, knight to e6 we have g4 uh by now shiro kicking with the knight we have knight to g7 and now after move knight to f6 we have a rook to f6 of course queen to f6 is not possible because you lose the d6 pawn and then probably also the e5 pawn so that's why rook to f6 we have queen to d5 uh here shiro is obviously preparing um here a battery on the default because we have now this backward pawn as a weakness that's something that bothers now of course black in the continuation of the game so that's why queen to e7 rook to uh, d1 and here rook to d8 protecting now also the pawn on d6 we have queen to a5 attacking now the a7 but now with b uh, b6 you can protect everything now the queen is connected to the pawn so that, that's why queen to d5 rook to f8 and now after uh, rook from a to c1 now comes finally the move that every king's indian player wants to play now it's simply time to open the king side because you cannot rush just into the attack you have to play first this kind of tiny little defensive moves you have to improve first your minor pieces you have to improve all of your pieces now with the move h5 obviously uh black is much much better because the king is a little bit naked here because the bishop is always in this types of structure bad piece because it's blocked out again by its own pawn structure so uh, now finally uh, uh, black is uh, breaking into the position so after move g takes a5 we have queen to h4 see already a dangerous position by the queen uh, we have now the rook to c6 and now we have g5 and now comes again sort of a critical moment of the game here alexa shiro has only one good defensive move and um, it's uh, not so easy to see of course because this moves uh, that i'm telling you now what should be played of course are simply top engine top stockish moves which are really really hard to find but uh, there is i think sort of an idea in chess when you have to lose some material at least uh make your opponent sweat for it uh, make your opponent at least battle for for your material so that's why here i think here e h6 is really a natural move because at least uh you make you're forcing your opponent to do something now you have to of course play queen to h6 and now actually with rook to g1 um white could maybe include a new defensive piece into the game because <clears throat> as i said it seemed to me in this position that simply white is lacking in defenders in front of the king so now with the move rook to g1 at least the rook is coming into the game at least the rook could defend maybe the king now uh here queen to h4 uh, would be sort of a line that uh is uh, of course good for black with the ideas to play finally then some ideas of g4 f3 knight to f4 maybe then as a fork could be also possible shots now after rook to d6 it would be a different position now rook to d6 would be perfectly fine because after rook to d6 we have a queen to d6 and now after rook to d8 maybe you could take out this one but now even if the rook comes on the second rank still you can defend yourself with uh king to king to f1 and uh, the, the the problem is i think in this position that the queen will come also now on the second rank but uh you have this defensive move and as i said this was simply a suggested stockfish line that uh, she have missed this is really brutal what you have to see in order to to, de to defend yourself rook to g2 now if a queen to h1 probably the game would lead into a perpetual so that's why this was the only way 
for Shiro to defend himself. But he played now uh, too early this rook to d6. He didn't play the move h6, and now uh, here from this point on uh, here Temur Rajabov has a comfortable game he played now simply uh, g4 you see now what happens for instance if you try f takes g4 then you get f3 after uh, bishop to f3 then you get knight to f4 the fork really really amazing amazing tactic that here uh, Temur Rajabov has prepared what you could do uh, it's now maybe to play rook to d8 but again rook to d8 then you ha have to play queen to d8 then knight to d8 and uh, still it's a much much better position after uh here you could also try bishop to e5 uh maybe to include the bishop into the game trying some annoying checks but the problem is now queen to h3 and for instance if you move the king to uh h1 then g3 is simply winning the game uh even if you try i don't know maybe something like king to uh, g1 then of course again g3 it's working after f takes uh, h takes g3 f takes g3 uh, still you have to sacrifice the bishop if you want to prolong the game maybe you could also escape with the king to f2 but it's not even better because still we can take off first this one and now after rook to d6 uh, bishop to to d6 and now rook to c1 so the rook will come again on the second rank we have here also the passer so it's again completely winning uh for uh, for black so after move g4 uh that was played by alexis shiro uh, by, by barajavo pardon me here alexis shiro tried an amazing amazing and stunning queen sacrifice uh, he tried really to be attractive here he tried really a beautiful beautiful tactic here he tried rook takes e6 and okay here rajabov takes uh rook takes d5 he took the queen we have rook to h6 look at this uh it seems so that uh, shirov can defend himself because of king to g1 we have bishop to c4 really really wild stuff so now Rajab uh, rajabov is really really challenged here because the rook will be probably taken but here after move g takes f3 and uh, king to h1 now Rajabov found really really beautiful and amazing tactic it was really a forcing tactic he found a beautiful beautiful stunning move knight to, uh, knight to h5 and this is really amazing because um, okay there are even better moves when you when you maybe put down this position into an engine but what he's trying to do is of course this very very annoying check on g3 so here uh, we have a rook to g1 uh, a very very annoying check but now after rook to g3 we have a rook takes g3 by Alexei Shiro we have f takes g3 so now Rajabov is sacrificing the queen back we have rook takes h4 but now with uh, g2 this is really beautiful what happened now these two pawns are marching we have uh, here king to g1 but now f2 you have to take and now f1 the promotion uh, this is really really everything is forced now alexa shiro has to take and now at the end of the tactical sequence you see uh here rajabov unpinned himself with the rook and has now this beautiful check on the second rank really really wild stuff look how uh great these calculations were by rajabov really really amazing stuff i'm sure that he saw everything here and this was really a force force tactical sequence so amazing amazing tactics and uh, i'm sure that you heard about shirov he was also always a great tactician but getting destroyed in such a tactical way here by rajovo i didn't really expect really really amazing tactics so from this point on obviously it's a complete evening game here for for black so here we have king to uh, g3 now um here rajabo takes we have bishop to c4 king to g7 and now bishop to b3 okay here we have this uh, pass pawn but okay and finally this uh, pawn is also protected but here Rajabo finds now finds now the good way how to include all of the pieces into the game a rook to uh, b1 of course with ideas to deliver annoying check on g1 so we have king to g2 we have a rook to uh, c8 trying of course uh, to create sort of a zigzag with both of these rooks creating one check on one rank then with this other rook on on, on the other rank so very important to cut off now the king's uh, king's activity so we have king to f3 rook to c3 uh king to g4 rook to f1 king to h5 and after king to f6 here in this position alex Shiro resigned so why did he resign because he could maybe include now uh somehow the rook into the game but now after rook to h3 you have to cover yourself that's the problem and now after rook takes h4 king to h4 this is now after rook to f4 completely winning will take out this pawn we have a passer and uh the bishop cannot defend everything although you have this passer but uh with the support of the bishop nothing going to happen here in black's position so really really amazing game especially because of this tactical sequence uh, where uh 
Temura Jabo sacrificed his queen back just in order to make this pawn roll. Then he created this amazing check on the second rank. Amazing, amazing tactic. So Temura Jabo, as I said, is also playing in the candidates in 2022. I hope he can play like this. And I hope that he'll pull off also many Kings Indians in the in the candidates. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed it a lot. This game will be added also into our uh, Best Chess Games of All Time series. Uh, if you haven't followed, here's the link of our Best Chess Games that have been ever played in chess history. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.